institutions, uh, this is just not the first time we've heard this talk. Uh, leaders in the country have uh, emphasized this, even uh, once uh, when the United States President visited the continent, he also made mention of building uh, our institutions. Uh, do you think there's something we're missing out on uh, getting it right in terms of having a better structure uh, in place so that uh, things like this can just naturally work by itself? You see, there should be sincerity and commitment in leadership. At all strata, we should be committed to make sure we have quality services to our people. We should render ourselves as leaders to serve our people and to serve our nation to the very best of our ability. And we should fight deliberately fight and bring corruption to a stop. Because corruption is one of the critical aspects that can destroy the fabric of a people and a nation. And we must deliberately go out to fight it. On top of that, institutions cannot function by themselves alone. They have to have committed people. People must be committed to the good of Nigeria and Nigerians. Especially people at leadership position. This brings me equally to the issue of how the press handles affairs of Nigeria sometimes. We have to call our colleagues, our friends in the media to equally be cautious. Because when you diagrade this nation on pages of newspaper or on, 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 on internet or anything, anything like that, with half big truth or absolute falsehood, what you are doing is you are destroying including yourself. We should be very careful how we do that. Other nations don't sell their, nation, their countries negatively. But Nigeria is often on pages of newspaper reported negatively. What people say, one would think that uh, the 1,000 delegates that came from over 17 nations for the World Economic Forum in Nigeria will not be, be here. They would not have come. If what be, is being published on pages of newspaper and websites is correct. But the truth is we have our challenges. And these challenges are challenges the leadership in Nigeria, all of us currently must take headlong and must deal with precisely. Anything short of that cannot bring the kind of success and development we have our nation to have. Nigeria should be a choice destination, an economic success story, a democratic success story in Africa. But we cannot achieve these things without putting things right. And how do we put things right? Our institutions must work. Our people must take into their heart and believe that this country is for all of us. And this country is a nation that has enormous potentials. And this country can move to be in the position of any developed nation. It's, uh, it's really uh, been a long time we had yeah. talks like this, because uh, once upon a time it was Afrocentric. Almost all African leaders had to talk about this unity amongst African nations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it, those that you want to call nationalists in the 70s, 60s, they also were talking about uh, the unity of the country. Absolutely. But it got to a point, politicians, uh, leaders, they made it look like it was you versus myself and the next man, to the extent that uh, the unity which we once had was no longer there. Uh, how can leadership, those in leadership like yourself, bring back that spirit so that it doesn't look like we are enemies amongst ourselves? Because if you look carefully, that is what people are already feeling in the country. It's wrong to feel that way. A brother against a brother, a sister against a sister, in a nation called Nigeria, it is absolutely wrong for people to feel that way. It is important for leadership to give the guideline. Because unless leaders put their personal interests behind and national interest take center stage, the division that is applied in the name of political gains by individuals will continue in Nigeria. But Nigerians must be wiser. They must know because A says I should follow this way and I live happily with my neighbor and our children go to the same school, there's no excuse for me to attack my neighbor simply because A says I should do that. Young Nigerians 
should come up and think positively about this country. Young Nigerians should know that this nation remaining together is their future, is their opportunity. Because already what's going on now, like you rightly said, there are feelings, you know, of their sentiments are being whipped high. And there's no reason why Nigerians should allow themselves to be driven in the direction of sentiment against nation. Sentiments don't produce good results. If you take a decision when you are angry or you are unhappy, you are likely to take a wrong decision. But if you take a decision in a calm atmosphere, then you are likely to arrive at that decision. But Nigerians need all the support they can get from their leaders to drive in the right path and in the right direction. And I think short of that, will continue to put a wedge. And a wedge for selfish interest, not for collective good. Look at our size, 170 million people. A, firm, a popular and a famous center uh, of largest black African country on the face of this world. And yet, look at the growth rate in Nigeria. The level of uh, production of even children that are produced uh, is about six times that of Europe. And that tells you, whoever has anything to sell, Nigeria is the good market for it. Population is growing. And population is power, population is strength. Look at what's happening to China. China is growing rapidly. What do you think about uh, this uh, well, a new tie of friendship uh, between Nigeria and China? Because, uh, well, looking at the Premier, uh, yesterday, uh, those were fantastic uh, well, plans uh, for the continent. China ruled out good plans for Nigeria. From the presentation made by Prime Minister yesterday, I happened to be there. And I believe that Nigeria should equally have the opportunity to work with China because China has moved from uh, development to almost developed economy, one of the leading economies in the world. So it's good to work with international friends who want to work with us. It's absolutely necessary for Nigeria to put its acts together and uh, look at the indices. And when you work with countries like China and India, who are just coming out of the challenges that some of us are facing today, African nations. When you work with them, tendency is you avoid the areas of mistake that they have made because you learn from their errors. And then at the same time, when we work with our traditional international partners like the US, the UK, Britain, German, uh, Germany, France, and others, you equally tap in into their wealth of experience. And you can work with them with the advanced technology. So Nigeria has potential to be able to work with a lot of international friends so that we advance the course of this country and its people. Mm. I mean, I agree because I see someone say on Twitter that she thinks she wants to relocate to Katsina State. <laughs> but n not many people know that Katsina has its uh, authorities attraction, you know, because of the walls that surround it and the seven gates, which I see here that it was built about 900 years oh, ago. Oh, yes. Katsina has a tremendous amount of history. Tell us about that. It has, uh, you know, uh, so many tourist facilities or destination that people don't even know about. Like uh, the Gubaro Minaret is a mineral that was built several hundreds of years ago. And is a mineral that people refer to as one of the ancient highest towers we have. You can call it the Afro Tower of Katsina. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have the Dub Itakushi. The Germans were there recently and excavation, archaeological excavations were done. Some ornaments and gold uh, trinkets and bowls and things were discovered there that is it hundreds of years ago. And uh, we have the Kusugu well that has a lot of traditional history behind it, where the, the, uh, the Bay Jida, an Arab man, came from the Arab land and came to set up the Hausa book, the history of how Hausa language came about in, in, in Nigeria by setting up Daura and then other Hausa states and non-Hausa states. So there's tremendous amount of history in Katina that's behind us. And besides, talking about education again, yeah. Katina is a center or part of the critical route of the Trans-Saharan trade route. And uh, Katsina happens to be the first place that a college, Western Education College, the Katsina College was established, that produced an enormous number of Northern Nigerian leaders, including the first Prime Minister of Nigeria, Sabukatapa Balewa, and Sir Amaribelo Sedano of Sokoto. And Katsina harbors 
you know, um, uh, the, the Eastern educational uh, infrastructure and, and facilities. So, so in, in a nutshell, Katina has so many historic sites to see, and I welcome Nigerians to Katina to come and share with us a city and a state that is for all Nigerians. You know, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, I just realized we haven't actually touched on health, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, pregnant women and children. We've seen a whole lot that some people have gone through in northern parts of the country. And uh, we also did a documentary feature, rather, on uh, a fiscal vagina fistula. And uh, we would love to see how you're handling some of the uh, health uh, challenges uh, in that part of you, in your state. You cannot hope to grow a nation, a state or a people without addressing health challenges or health issues. Health institutions must be able to work and work well. When we came into office in 2007, we looked critically at our health infrastructure, like other infrastructures, and we felt there was need for us to put more effort, to do much more than what we met on ground. And uh, our first approach was to see how we can expand and improve the facilities on ground. There's a hospital I met under construction when I came into office for child and maternal care. We completed the hospital in a period of nine months, and we moved our staff there, and we have been offering free Medicare for women and children. We offer free Medicare since I became governor for pregnant women, free Medicare for nursing mothers, free Medicare for children from date of birth to age five, free Medicare for malaria patients, free Medicare for accident victims for the first 48 hours, free Medicare for people with renal diseases. And uh, indeed, we set up, you know, uh, what we call Rural Ambulance Service Scheme. That was a baby of, I, 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 I initiated and I'm very happy about it because it's achieving so much results. We set up Rural Ambulance Service Scheme, whereby we provided one ambulance per local government headquarters. We train four medical personnel per ambulance. And we ask the ambulance to drive from village to village, hard to reach areas, to go there and deliver Medicare for free. And uh, these ambulances, with the trained personnel, with free Medicare on board, go to these places. Because you know, there is shortage of doctors all over Nigeria. Medical personnel are not really available. And when they are readily available, they are not willing to go to live in the remotest rural areas. So we felt, we have to go to the rural areas ourselves and take Medicare to the people there. So people got used to it. When the ambulance comes into town, it blasts a siren. All the local populace come around and they sit around the ambulance and they get attended to. Some even deliver babies there, you know, in the ambulances. Some who have difficult elements to treat by that ambulance or that composition of medical staff, the ambulance is used to convey that, that patient to the nearest major medical facility. We have wow. built over 85 new clinics. We have built a new, brand new, uh, you know, orthopedic and uh, specialist hospital, 250 bed. It's just being equipped and will soon be launched. We have improved the quality service in our hospitals. We have hired more doctors. We are still hiring. We have improved salary of doctors uh, about two, three times. And uh, we are generally trying as best as we can to introduce. And then our primary health care system is one of the most effective in the country. We have vibrant. Look, the issue of polio. Katsina recorded about four or seven polio cases a year ago. Today, we recorded zero. We are paying serious attention to immunization Generally, I think against that, 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 diseases. That, that, that's a place, uh, sorry, sir. Uh, yeah, we should, uh, we'll, um, we should see what's going on. See what's but, actually it, going on. You should Absolutely. come. You're welcome to come and look at all these things I'm telling you about. All right. It's been an interesting conversation with His Excellency, uh, Governor Ibrahim Shema of Katsina State. Thank you very much for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay,